Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the stream. Ah. Did you read the articles they sent you on Instagram? Are those the base camp articles you referring to, Matthew? Let me know if it, I get a lot of articles. I think that's what it was. Um, let me know if that's it. So, I think I got a decent, interesting stream tonight. We'll do the Q&A, of course. But what I want to do is cover a few things. Um, yeah, yeah, I have not changed my profile photo. So what are we going to get into? So, in a nutshell, the only reason you would go to college for a coding degree is if you wanted to get into some sort of company that required some sort of higher education piece of paper to get in. Um, that's pretty much it. Now, if you're in the States and you have to incur a lot of debt to go to college, then I would give it a big thumbs down because that's a very, very pernicious and dangerous debt. Anybody who knows me knows that's the case. You, it's one of the big, um, in my opinion, one of the big evils in North American society was putting students into massive debt uh, at the benefit of the, the schools and the institutions, unfortunately. It makes no sense to give, have an 18-year-old sign away, for, sign up for $50,000 a year in debt or $20,000 a year in debt. That's just crazy. It's, 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 it's not moral, in my opinion. But anyway, so that's the short answer. So uh, let me just jump into something. Um, this is in sp specific to coding, by the way. Let me just jump into something. So a little, a little article on entrepreneur.com. Elon Musk, you don't need a college degree to work at Tesla. But wait, there's more. There's, war there's more. There's not this, this guy here. Let me just read a couple of things. So this is uh, last year's article. On multiple occasions, as was the case at the 2020 satellite conference, CEO of SpaceX and Tesla announced that, he, that the university was not for learning, but basically for fun. So if you're going to go for fun, you can save a lot of money. The billionaire claims that any subject can be learned online for free. He indicated that billionaires like Bill Gates, Larry Ellison at Oracle left college behind. I think Steve Jobs, too. Tech leaders who have questioned the requirements for, for college degrees. Elon Musk is not the only one to question the need for college degrees. People like Tim Cook, Apple's CEO, biggest company in the world, uh, mentioned in 2019 that, the, that on average half of Apple's jobs in the U.S. included people without degrees. Similarly, he commented that several universities do not teach the skills that business leaders require most throughout their workforce. Glassdoor found that tech companies like Apple, Google, and IBM also don't, don't need a college degree to get a job. In fact, Google did courses for the Google Career Certificate, which is a half-year program that prepares, prepares participants for jobs. According to LinkedIn, many famous companies, including the tech giants, don't need employees with college degrees. Following a study and analysis of data, he discovered that specific positions are most likely to be filled by non-college graduates, such as electronic technicians, mechanical designers, marketing representatives. Um, executives who have led large companies without college degrees include uh, Travis Kyler Nick of Uber, Michael Dell of Dell Computers, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, Steve Jobs of Apple, Erich Federdalsi of Dropbox, uh, I don't know, Jan Kaum, I guess, of WhatsApp, Jane Mac John McKay, Whole Foods Market, Jack Dorsey of Twitter. Oh, my Jesus, Lord. All right, so... Um, that pretty much ends that, you know. I think if you... Uh, there's no debating, you know, of all these world, you know, world power, massive nerds, you know, that tells you what you need to know. So when it comes to coding, again, um, I don't have a degree in coding. There's no question about that. I learned on my own on the go. I invested a lot in books at the time. I used to spend a few thousand dollars a year on books until they started paying me to do it. But um, yeah. My background in university was psychology. 
could have learned it on my own. Uh, buy a couple of books by Cialdini, Kahneman, a few other guys, Crimmins, Little Jung, and away you go, you know. Uh, so there you go. If you have a degree, that's cool. It helps. It will help you in certain jobs to get those jobs. There's no question. But uh, generally speaking, I think, especially in the coding world, as uh, things progress, the need for college degrees will diminish and diminish and diminish and diminish. Um, if you want to uh, get out there and start a business, no college degree. Don't waste your time and money on that. Just get into business. Younger the better. If you want to freelance, college degrees are absolutely useless. Younger the better. Get out there and start making money as a freelancer. For sure. These are questions that come up all the time. I get DMs all the time about this. I'm answering it officially here. So right to the point, boom, that's your answer. There you go. Okay, what about boot camps? Mm, boot camps, it really comes down to the quality of the teacher. That's all that it comes down to. Same with the colleges, by the way. You can go to the best colleges, universities in the world, but if the professor is no good, don't matter much, right? I can tell you, I have friends who work at some big universities, and I won't say where in the world, but they work at big universities. I have multiple friends from different universities, and they tell me the same thing. Something I suspected back in the days, that college, a lot of the curriculum, a lot of the courses they have students do have nothing to do with whether or not those courses are needed in industry. No, they're just there because professors teach that, and that's it. So I remember I faced that personally, a personal pet peeve. I mean, choosing, deciding what program I was going to get into in university. And I couldn't get into, uh, I think it was uh, business administration. Or I forget what it was called. I think it was called business administration at the time. Basically, I had to run a business because I did not have Cal 2, Calculus 2. And I come from a family of business people, you know. And I said, what the hell do you need Cal 2 to run a business? The answer is, you don't need Cal 2 to run a business. It was one of those false and fake requirements that they said, weeded out people is total garbage. It was just to sell a Cal 2 course because some professor wanted to teach Cal 2. That's it. So um, there's that part of the stream answer. I'll be get to get into Q&A soon. If you like these type of real-world coding and business and career oriented videos please give me a thumbs up it's good for the algorithms tell your friends and your family your grandmother about these streams so i want to get into something else before i move on um so yeah i have something coming out tomorrow i'll get right to it yeah i'm not going to go into it but I, php 8 i've been working on my php 8 pro course and I've been just looking at the, the top things that uh, you see in PHP 8, named attributes, uh, excuse me, named arguments, which are very cool, uh, attributes. These are all just kind of shorthand methods of doing things. I'll get into, you'll see a video come out tomorrow. It's going to be more detailed. Constructor, prop, constructor property promotion, which is very cool, shorthand coding. Union types, very nice. Match expression, very nice, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Also, um, Saner string comparison. So basically with PHP 8, uh, also just in time compilation, which means faster. You thought that Ruby was slower than PHP before. Well, Ruby is much slower than PHP 5.6. PHP 7 was 50% faster than PHP 5.6. And PHP 8 is even faster, eh, depending on what you're doing. Anyway, up to three times better performance, depending. Anyway, so I'm going to be covering that tomorrow in a video on PHP 8 for you PHP nerdlings out there. So it's kind of cool. Again, Part of my research uh, in the upcoming uh, PHP uh, uh, PHP 8 Pro course that I'm coming out with. Now, I didn't look closely at P well, PHP 8 came out a few months ago. Just you know, I think it was November 26th. November 26th, so like four or five months ago. You never jump on a major version of a piece of software. Like PHP, when you go from 7.2 to PHP 8.0. Hold back, hold back. You want to wait for them to work out some of the bugs, you know? So I think it's an 8.1 now. So I figure it introduces some of the key theories. Uh, yeah, so that should be interesting. That should be interesting for people who are into that kind of stuff. All right, so another thing I wanted to cover. So people have been asking me about this. So I started a passion project with a friend of mine because I used to be a McFadder a lot. And um, 
So it's a company called The Body Developer, thebodydeveloper.com. Uh, basically, it's a weight loss program designed for coders, people who don't want to go to the gym. And in fact, anybody knows losing weight, getting healthy has a lot to do, much more to do with habits than going to the gym. So we already got some reviews. I'm going to check out some of the Google reviews. So from a day ago, so some older guys too. So uh, I just want to read coming to some of the reviews. We're pretty happy, we're pretty stoked because this program we put together based on our own personal experiences. My friend was type 2 diabetes, over 300 pounds. You can go see the video. And he lost it all five, six years ago, has kept it off, and he's in great shape, not having to work out or anything. And I did the same thing. I was My max weight was about 50 pounds heavier than I am now, and I've kept it off for decades now. And, you know, ups and downs here and there, never going way back up there, that's for sure. But as I refined my habits, and it's pretty easy to do once you understand the principles, uh, all of a sudden, you know, I just kept the weight off for indefinitely. So let me uh, show you some of the reviews here. Uh, with short weekly meetings and regular follow-ups between uh, his broad knowledge and hands-on approach that suited me well. That's Oren, my buddy. Oren's the kind of person to make sure you feel accountable for your actions. This actually didn't feel like a weight loss program at all. It was more of a transition towards a healthier lifestyle with great results so far. That's the key. Don't have to go to the gym and train like a nut. That's, that's it's pointless, by the way. I lost over 20 pounds in five weeks and now have the tools to move forward and stay on track to lose an extra 30 pounds by July. All I can say is thank you, Warren, for everything. So this is, I think this guy is 52 years old. So uh, very slow metab metabolism relative to young, young whippersnappers out there. Take back control of your diet. Warren has taught me a lot. A lot more than just how to lose weight. By far, the most life-changing thing you take away from the body developer is a newfound sense of self-control when it comes to food. Before I started working with Oren, my willpower all around, excuse me, my willpower around all the wrong types of food was at an all-time low. With Oren's help, making healthy decisions about what I eat has become almost second nature. My entire mindset around food has changed in a very short time so there's several more we just started doing this on the side you know so uh here's another guy here so my name is Haim. i live in boston massachusetts i have been in shape i have always been in shape and fit my entire life recently this year i started noticing an extreme weight gain from 183 to 212 i felt heavy unmotivated Anyway, so um, let's go on here after a week and a half i dropped 10 pounds without working out that is the key so yeah if you are interested in that you should just go to um you should go to the body developer i'll put a link below actually you should go to bodydeveloper.com and uh, you can get on it's uh, the program it's uh pretty pretty useful so you just go to thebodydeveloper.com yeah i'm shilling it but it works it's for coders people don't want to work out so you know i figured you guys would find that kind of interesting and useful all right let's do a little q and a uh, let's see let's see php 8 is doper fibers a sink and nooms never return type and so many more yeah yes yeah, it's, it's a lot out there so let me just jump up okay it's been eight months i'm focusing now on js and react and jcore so do you think i should switch to app dev give up codings or start learning wordpress and that's it no no if you've been having trouble um, I think you should, I, again, I'm not trying to sell it, but you should do my website course. It's going to really solve a lot of problem. Um, and then once you've done my website course, it's fantastic for fundamentals. Then everything else will be easy for you. So that's what I do. CS50 is not an absolute beginner's course. That's why you should do my studio web courses because they're absolute beginner's courses. You know why you don't see good absolute beginner's courses out there? It's because it's really hard to create absolute beginners courses they're actually the hardest courses to create uh so that's what it is uh i started a react course a couple days ago wow it's actually pretty cool good you found a good one fantastic get a very basic down and build a project get very base get the very basics down and build projects that's exactly it that's my my secret sauce that's why people you know i got in my code courses, I have a lot of mini projects and things you build. Like in the Python course, you're building objects, you're building a simple game, you're animating in JavaScript, you're doing DOM manipulation, you do all kinds of stuff that people do in the real world. But uh, 
I don't have create a Twitter clone with uh, no React and Node.js because that it's. It's not going to help you too much. What's going to really help you is you do your fundamentals, the basics, and then you just go in there and you do real projects and you learn as you go. That's how you're going to, if, if you want to level up quick, if that's your goal, I don't know. Or you want to be a PERMA student, then you can do tutorials forever if you like. So what else do we got here for questions? When's your 170th birthday? See, what happens when you hit 169, your growth, your aging stops at that level. It just stops there. It doesn't go on beyond that. So, yeah, Python for the win. <laughs> I'm getting less and less reason to hate PHP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. Hola, hola. Okay, what's, well, uh, hola. Definitely learning online. How long did you study code before getting your first job? I never worked for anybody. I did contract work on occasion, but I did my, I learned to code to build the fir my first site for my own business. And then I started, uh, I sold out that business. So then I started building projects. No, oh, actually, in 95, I did my first, I keep forgetting, the, I did contracts for legal firms in 1995, building their websites. Uh, so that was the first, and that's why, but within, within a few months, <laughs> within a few months, I started building simple sites for people. Uh, I took it from there. So I went from web sites and web design to simple web apps to complex web apps to uh, learn e-learning software for major pharmaceuticals, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, when you are by yourself, there is no one else to ask questions when you are stuck for a week solving issue and get feedback from. Uh, that is a good, but also a bad thing. Well, no, not necessarily. Um, I'm gonna set up my Discord server this week, come hell or high water, so that's gonna be a place. You also have Google where you can have almost any question ever uh, that you're going to come, any problem that you ever come across, you're probably going to find an answer through Google, which will probably lead to Stack Overflow or somewhere else. Um, yeah, so there's many places to go. You, as a professional developer, whether you specialize in PHP or you go to Python Django or you, uh, whatever, WordPress, one of your skills is to learn how to search online and find answers because as a professional developer, that's what you're going to be doing a lot of, by the way. And there's, an illusion, there's an illusion by young nerdlings who are jumping into it that they're going to sit down at the computer and know everything. I know everything because I did two Udemy courses. It doesn't work that way. Um, you have to understand that your job as a developer is to f solve the puzzles, the puzzles being the projects that you build. So your skill as a developer is actually part of it is to be able to learn new tech on the fly. That's what you have to do. It's kind of like um, if you were a musician, it's kind of like playing covers where you just play every notes in succession. That's not really, that's not being, that's kind of low level musician. The best musicians are the jazz players or the jammers who can go into jams and flow from one melody to the next and and they riff off of stuff, and thou, those are true great musicians, not the people who just do karaoke, right? So you don't want to be a karaoke coder. You want to be a true a virtuoso coder. And I got to use that. Remind me, karaoke coder, that's not what you want to be. All right, I hope that helps. Uh, I have the money, but can't find the right course. You just found it, Hamza. Just check out my stuff below, guarantee. Uh, best way for mid-level SDE to get into software architecture to start building projects man start designing projects best freelancing language PHP is the best freelancing freelancing language hey it's Caddy's world how are you welcome to the stream Pablo Pasin Massa hi everyone if you have free time code line online is the answer it gives you a way to learn uh, Right, all right. Uh, um, uh, I recommend you do mine first, and then you can move on into er anything else. A killer PHP, that's the old site. That's my old site. Woof, going back, way back, way back. Thank you, Marianne, for the plugs. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, I have a couple of programs. And I'll we'll show you. So I got my mentoring program. This is my most pro. This is if you want like the, um, 
Steph on steroids program, this covers everything. This private, you got private consultations, Zoom meetings, hundreds of lessons, interactive quizzing, instant feedback, instant help, uh, soft skills training, job interview trip, prep training, whatever you need, it's all in there. This is the most comprehensive. You're going to see, don't take my word for it, just check out all the Google reviews. There's, I got, uh, whatever, almost 160 now. I took off all my old reviews and so I just use Google, so, you know. Uh, I give Stefan five stars for a studio web project because it's unlike anything I've tried before. His, his engaging with corny jokes and really grabs your attention with the demonstrations he provides. I spent a good month watching courses through LinkedIn Learning and I found myself struggling to apply the concepts, but he provides projects that allows you to put what you need, what you learn to the test. Uh, he's very passionate about wanting people to understand coding and it's part of every day's lives. Okay, so there you go. Uh, very, very good teaching staff. Steph is a great teacher who cares about the students. So, you know, anyway, you can just read on. You can decide. So I got my mentoring program, which is my most premium. I also have my store. All the links are below where you can buy individual courses from me and so forth. So, all right, enough of the advertisement. Got to advertise. Um, George says, I'm working on a degree in IT. Almost done. Congratulations. That you have to respect people who are able to follow through that way. So that's cool. I'm starting to do more coding, putting together a portfolio. How would you go about leveraging an IT experience to speed up the learning process? I don't know. It depends on your IT uh, training. Not all IT training is the same. It's not universal. So I don't know what you did specifically. It's hard to say. So I have to leave that up to you. I would hope, um, again, what I suggest for people to do, put up a website, which is your resume site and then reach out and start trying to get, um, uh, try to get gigs. So which is best, a college boot camp or code online? I would say code online. Uh, the problem with boot camps, I hear, I don't know, I haven't been to all the boot camps, I hear that a lot of boot camps teachers are not too good. I'm sure there's some good ones, but I also don't like the structure of the boot camp where they assume everybody has to learn everything at the same time, at the same pace. Not everybody has the same schedules. Not everybody has the same learning aptitudes. Um, that's an old style of education. I'm in the education business. Studio Web, my platform, is used by schools uh, all over the world, really. And I've been working with schools for over a decade. And uh, so, yeah, I can tell you, modern educational approaches, uh, so these are just some of the schools down here that use Studio Web. Uh, some of the schools, I can tell you with modern educational approach, excuse me, um, uh, having a force structure, having everybody have to finish JavaScript by the end of May, and then everybody has to move on to Python next is is kind of antiquated. It's like using, it's like saying, okay, we gotta, we gotta take a trip to California, okay, everybody get on their horses and get their horses and buggies and let's go. No, it's it's such an old method, it's an antiquated method of education. Education has to be self-paced, um, it has to be independent, uh, there has to be instant feedback, uh, education should be gamified. Anyway, the Studio Web application represents modern educational practices, which are far more effective, which means, bottom line, is you're gonna learn much more quickly. Uh, so yeah, the problem I have with boot camps, as far as I understand, they all work on these fixed and rigid schedules. Number one, problem. Number two, goes against learning. Number two, they um, they force you to do you know a lot of times six eight hours a day, which is again is silly. The brain has maximum capacity for three to four hours a day, give or take depending on the individual. So you shouldn't be spending more than three to four hours on intense work per day. You also need to give brain time to assimilate the new knowledge because when you're learning how to code, you are literally rewiring parts of your brain. You're literally creating new physiological, physical connections. It takes time to happen. So just like when you go to the gym and you're working out and you're, you know, any bodybuilder will tell you, any athlete will tell you, rest time, is as important in many respects as the training time. So boot camp, five days a week, six to eight hours a day, is, and it, 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 against, it goes against that. You have to give yourself time to relax. That's why I say when you're doing tense work, three to four hours a day is optimal for most people. You wanna give yourself a day off. I say if you're learning something new, four days a week, five days a week max, time off. 
that rest period and that period of simulation is uh, very, very, very important. So there you go. That's my criticism of that. So I say learn online, and yes, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm preaching my book, right? I, t I have online courses, but I also supply schools and stuff uh, with Studio Web. So, but that's how I feel. Uh, I went to film school and left after five months. Over ten grand debt. Woof! Thankfully, paid off. Yeah, there you go. Film school. If you want to learn to film, you get yourself a camera and you start filming. Look at this. I got the best bokeh game in the live streaming biz, right? And I, not one day is film school. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Hey, Rob, how are you? How's Steph? Hey, Steph, how's it going? I'm going good. All right, guys, you know the ritual I forgot to ask. I want, if you don't mind, everybody's on. Um, first of all, please give me a thumbs up if you like this stream. Number two... Um, say where you're from. So Rob Burns from blah, blah. Matthew Smith from California. Uh, yeah, remind me about the, yeah, yeah, the Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, that's getting into some crazy stuff, you know. I don't want to get into that. I want to stick to coding. Um, yeah, okay. So yeah, so that's, uh, all right, Andrew, comment of the night. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, tell me where you're from. Say what part of the world you're from. I'm always curious. Every, I think everybody's curious. And also, uh, I'm good, man. I'm good. How are you? How are you go? And um, say, uh, where, uh, hello, uh, burning from whatever. I don't know. Where are you from? Montreal? Uh, uh, okay, let's see. Let's scroll down. Let's go down. Let's go down. Let's go down. Let's go down. All right, all right. Uh, yeah, you know, Warren. There we go. Uh, and you there's the best burning. Thank you for the advice. So, so I see the. There we go. Oh, Asker says, "Hey, Steph, I would like to ask you and know more about you. If you really do have, if I really, if really I do have to create a business plan before becoming. No, you don't. You don't have to create a business plan." <laughs> Business plans are one of the silliest things. Uh, I, I've been in business since I've been 18, so that's like, it's like 95 years. And um, business plans are silly because when you put out a business plan, when you're starting up a new business, you make all these assumptions are going to be all they're going to be proven false, 100 percent, because you don't know what the business is going to do. Businesses that pivot are, let me restate that, 99% of business will pivot quite a bit in the first few years. So every time you pivot, your business plan goes out the window. Now, due to the silliness, when you, if you go to a bank to get a loan, or who does that these days, you're going to need a business plan because they're all from college. They don't know anything. People work at the banks. They don't know anything about business, so they're told you got to have a business plan. Um and then if you're raising money with VCs, and they're going to want business plans uh, to a certain extent. But they're, they're, they're poubelle, they're garbage, because the business changed so radically uh, in the first few years of a startup's life that it's just like it's, it's, it's a wasted exercise. The only thing you can, I can see value from it is managing your budget. The one thing, you're never out of business if you, if you have money in the bank, right? So you don't want to spend money in a, in a new business, in any business, unless you absolutely have to. Um, so yeah, business plan for freelancing is absolutely not needed. But what is needed is you go below, get my freelance course. That's going to jump start start your freelance business in no time. It will cost you two coffees, so I think it's worth two coffees. Uh, salut, Steph. Revin Z Z. Uh, my big big kid dream is living in Canada, Montreal, uh, Quebec. What is the language? Technology stack where there is a lot of jobs. You know, I don't know. I think it would depend on the company. Like my friend's company is hiring like crazy. They do PHP and uh, Python. Uh, so you might uh, call paper. You might check that out. But I think you find a whole array of languages. Big companies will be on Java and .NET. Smaller businesses will be on PHP and JavaScript. You know. So there you go. Yes, please. Thumbs. How we do with the thumbs? Eh, not bad. 51 thumbs? 
Yeah, yeah. I, I used to feel strange asking for thumbs, but then I found out that the Google AI, the Google robot, um, they, 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 they demand thumbs. Oh, yeah, one thing I want to point out. People are asking me, they asked me, oh, is AI, is AI going to destroy coding jobs? No chance. Not for a long time. I'll tell you why. Because I was talking to a friend of mine who shall not be named. And he's way involved in a very advanced AI research. And he was telling me that in the AI research field, a lot of the people who put out their research papers about the effectiveness of their AIs, uh, they're lying. There's a lot of misrepresentation. Uh, so what they'll do, what do I mean by that? So apparently uh, they will, um, they'll, they'll have, a, they'll have a, a particular AI they developed and they'll run it and they'll run it like a hundred times and they'll pick the one time that it did well. And look, they, look how good my AI is. Look how good it, the other hundred times, 99 times didn't do so well. They, they sort of ignore those, those reports. And they do that because they want to get funding so that they can continue their research. So keep that in mind, number one. Number two, I have two friends who have different companies. One uses AI to support a, uh, a process, and the other one, their main business is AI. And they've been at it for years, and they can tell you through their experience that the AI is useful, but it is, a, it is a supportive technology, not a replacing technology. Uh, one guy was one company I know. They were trying to develop. The, they spent a lot of money trying to develop an AI to replace humans in a certain task, which I won't get into. But they found that it just couldn't. They couldn't get it to work. And they, and they had hired some really top-notch AI guys and ran a bunch of data against it, and they just couldn't get it to work. So they pivoted and they used AI to support their processes but AI is not uh, a replacing technology. And based, that, based on those two experiences from those two different guys and their companies, plus my friend who's doing advanced research, uh, it's not gonna be for a long, long time. <laughs> so don't worry about AI replacing anything. Um, is PHP and MySQL relevant this, to this year? It is super relevant this year. It's one of the most relevant combo uh, technologies in the world today. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, and this is the reason why. Uh, hi, Stefan. I said that because I have an Upwork account that I check daily. I browse projects. And so what people want, I, but I noticed 80% demand WordPress. So I'm confused if starting to learn front-end dev was a mistake. No, it's not because that skill that you uh, have acquired thus far as a front-end dev, it can translate to all kinds of different areas, including WordPress. But you are learning once you get out in the real world. It's not the mean or the MERN stack that people are looking for. It's WordPress and PHP, right? It's Java. It's C Sharp and .NET. Um, it's Python. Uh, you know, there's jobs, don't get me wrong, there's jobs in Mern, and, but there's a huge amount of jobs, especially as a freelancer. PHP, WordPress is king. If you can, be, if you can stomach that, if it's, if it's the type of work that you can get along with, you can make buckets of money being a WordPress professional as a freelancer. Do you think Angular will go away in the future? No, I think, um, I think it will be a very slow slow burn over time uh, but I think we'll be around for a long time so I wouldn't be too concerned good coders copy great coders steals Stefan Picasso <laughs> yeah, that's true uh, best CMS and why is it wagtail <laughs> exactly uh, I'm pretty good with Java oh, hold on there we go I'm pretty good with JavaScript and Python I want to learn Lower level statically statically typed languages. Looked at Rust. It's ugly. Nim is good, but no jobs. What's your recommendation? I don't know. Check out C Sharp. Try that out. Maybe Java. C Sharp. Ah yes, Matthew. He's uh, one of the he's one of the mentoring groups. Mentoring A plus plus. Check out my mentoring program. Uh, what keynote? You have for a PHP, what 
what keynote you have for a PHP newbie? What keynote? I don't know what you mean by that. You should take my PHP course. Go to the Studio Web Store, links below. Take that. You'll learn a huge amount about uh, PHP. Who are you? I'm the 169-year-old developer. Google me. That's who I am. You'll figure that one out. Uh, a lot of boot camps use recent grads. Yes, I read that. Not good. Teaching is, is a good way to learn more, but if I'm paying top dollar, I want a veteran teaching, not just my opinion. Oh, no, guys, that's, that's, it's almost, um, I don't know if you could sue them, but it's like having, in, in, one thing I learned in martial arts, I forget which one, one of my Japanese teachers, I remember he said to some to me, as I, when I first joined a school, I had training in other schools, I joined a school and they were doing a type of wrist lock, I think it was, and the teacher, and some, the guy I was training with, he couldn't get it. I said, why don't you just go like this? And the teacher came around and said, students don't teach students because you're going to teach them wrong. He was right. And that's the problem with all these boot camps. A good friend of mine who has um, 1,000 employees, he tried hiring from boot camps, and uh, it was a total failure. It's like, no, never do that again. Because you got the teachers, you got the students teaching the students, you know. Uh, is PHP and MySQL relevant to our days to learn? Yes, it's, there's a lot of jobs. WordPress, it's all PHP, MySQL, right? Uh, uh, what framework do you prefer, React, Vue, or Angular? I am a big, um, of the three, for me, it's Vue. I think there's more jobs in Angular, excuse me, in React. Uh... I've been coding constantly and got a breakdown. It happens, man. You gotta pace yourself. Currently taking a break for my eyes and health. Sometimes the hype of getting stuff done is irresistible. Yeah, you gotta pace yourself. Coding is more like a, a, a marathon run, if you will. It's not a sprint. If you try a sprint, you're gonna burn yourself out, hit burnout. I've hit burnout many, you know, a long time ago. And, um, and you don't wanna get to burnout. Uh, getting to burnout as a coder will get you, will put you on the sideline for a long time. Kind of like you don't want to put on 50 pounds. You when you find you're five pounds overweight, then you want to start looking at your your health and your diet. Not when you're 50 pounds or 100 pounds overweight. It's a lot easier to get back to uh, good health when you pay attention to it early. So if you are a developer now professionally, let me tell you from experience, not mine, ju not just mine, but many others. You want to pace yourself. You want, you know, your rest time is important. So take, when you go for lunch, if you go for lunch, it's good time, it's good to skip breakfast and lunch a lot of times. Anyway, when you go for lunch, go for a walk, go exercise, exercise on the weekend. Uh, every hour, you take a break from the, walk away from the desk, or walk around for 10 minutes, take a break, relax, stretch. Very important, trust me. If you do that, you won't burn out. But if you just co constantly for hours, you know, you may be able to handle that for a couple of years. But then if you hit burnout, then it's a hard time to get back into it. So, yeah, don't make that mistake. I made that mistake. Uh, hi, Stefan. How can a freelance WordPress developer land medium and large size projects? By doing a lot of small projects. I also took a couple of your courses. They're hands down the best. Hey, I appreciate that, Brendan. Thank you. See, Brendan knows. Um, yeah, here's a rule of so, uh, freelancing. Big companies don't deal with small companies simply because they don't want the risk. So imagine you work for a big company. A lot of people go work for big companies because they're risk averse. They're not the type of people who want to go start a business. They're very risk averse. So that means if they who are, if somebody is working at a big company, and they hire, you know, Brendan, who he may be the great WordPress developer, maybe a great developer, period. And Brendan messes up. This guy will go, he'll get a lot of heat from the other people working at the big company or the medium-sized company because why did you hire just some random freelancer? Look, look, he messed up the you know, job, you know? You should hire an established business. So what they will do people working at larger companies, they will hire bigger established companies because they don't want any heat. Because if the bigger established company messes up, they'll go, wait, wait, it was a big established company. You know, they, they were credible, so he won't get heat. 
So Brendan may be the best WordPress freelancer out there, but until he's perceived as being credible, meaning you have a, a good track record, a good portfolio site, lots of little projects you've done for people, you won't get the medium-sized project. When you got that under your belt, then the bigger, the medium-sized companies will start approaching, the bigger ones will start approaching you. That's just, that's just the, the step. Those are the steps. You don't want to, everybody wants to get to the top of the mountain quick. The key to the top of the mountain is not to try to jump up here. The key is to go one step at a time and you get your way there. That's the quickest route. I hope that helps. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that needs to be a t-shirt. All right, I got to put up uh, some t-shirts. Need to nerd. That's another one. Hey, Ahmed. Madi from the Middle East. Very cool. Welcome to the stream. Andrew from Oklahoma City. He's Jesus Aguilar from Mexico. Hey, Brandon from Vegas. Very cool. I love Vegas, by the way. I used to go twice a year. I went to Vegas in, um, for the first time, I went in like a September. I usually go like January, February, where it was super hot. But man, that dry heat was like very therapeutic on the bones. I, it was like getting my, I remember I went out and I was like my bones were being massaged by that, that dry heat. Great. Hello from Argentina. I listen to you while I work on my portfolio. Right, very good. Welcome to the stream. Ludra M. Veladi, Sunrise, Florida. Hey, great, great. How are you, man? You're Detroit, Mexican, Michigan, excuse me. Do you recommend a learning schedule? Yes, four, three to four hours a day max, four days a week, minimum 20, hours, 20 minutes a day. So on that day where you don't feel like working, just do 20 minutes. And after 20 minutes, you still don't feel like working. You've done your 20 minutes. You've accomplished your goal. You want to make your goal to do that daily 20 minutes. Why? Because you're going to create a positive reinforcement, a, emotional, a positive emotional uh, reaction to sitting down and learning to code, which will make coding easier for you to learn trust me you learn all that in my lizard wizard course it's links below oh I might as well pump that a little bit I'll mention that so here is where's lizard wizard so first of all if you're new to coding just go the newsletter below there's a sign up below coders career path webinar 29 minute video free so I am to the newsletter you get 29 minute video where I talk about the different languages and how they apply to the different types of jobs that you will do and the different types of companies you work for. So check it out, Coders Career Path, links below, free webinar, very useful for Total. I created it because people were asking me that, you know, what kind of job will I get doing C++? What kind of job will I do, get doing Python? What kind of job I would get doing, I don't know, JavaScript? It's all in there. Uh, yeah, for psychology training, you should check out Lizard Wizard Komodo, links below. This is a free, you sign it up, it's a program, and every three days you will get new psychological training lessons that are going to help you with so many aspects of your life. It's part of this course, actually. It's part of my Lizard Wizard course. This is not free. You're going to have to spend, you got to buy me a couple of coffees, but it's the foundation of all the training and it's soft skills, psychology training, et cetera. So there it is. It's there for you if you want, but Lizard Wizard here at Komodo, this is free. Just sign up here. There you go. I hope that helps. Uh, Algeria. Indonesia, very cool. Algeria, Indonesia, San Diego. I'm from Algeria. Hey, I'm Arabic. I love the value you give in this channel and the content. Oh, I appreciate that. Ibrahim. I think I said that correctly. Very cool. <laughs> oh, Montreal, Quebec. Yeah, very cool. Uh, new here. Do you upload these streams after? Yeah, they'll be there for you. Um, you'll see them on the channel. Uh, what would you be doing if you never became a programmer? Some sort of entrepreneurship, some sort of business. I was an entrepreneur first before I became a developer. Matt's from Indiana, very cool. Sunrise, Florida, Korea, a real international audience. Sweden, <laughs> South Africa, elbow cough. Jordan, ah, very cool. Can you pronounce my name? Ah. Bara. Uh, <laughs> Albu Abu Arub. Probably messed that up. My apologies. Let me know. How, spell it to me phonetically. Uh, 
Sadiq says, something happened to me this weekend that really made me depressed. I didn't work for two days this week. What is the difference between the 49 a month package versus 79? 79 gives you the three consultations private with me, uh, which I have people, you're able to trigger that after you've completed the five foundation courses, because I don't want you to waste the consultation asking me questions that you're going to get in those courses. And it could be, check out my resume, uh, check out my site. I got a project, Steph. What do you think of this project? Here are the specifics. How would you design this, Steph? That, those type of questions. Sometimes I answer them by uh, private video session. Sometimes I pre-record a private video. Sometimes just an email. But that's the difference. You get those three consultations with me. Uh, there you go. Uh, I'm sure... Don't worry about the depression. There's ups and downs in life. Don't worry. Just uh, do some exercise. Do some lizard wizard breathing techniques and uh, mood control techniques. They will pass and you uh, move on from there. No worries about it. Bay Island, Honduras. Ah, very good. Shopify is not as big as WordPress. Will Shopify demand increase in the future? I think Shopify is here to stay, so that's a good environment to be in. Uh, best to learn, I would say learn online because you can learn online for far cheaper, far cheaper. And you, you find somebody with experience, you can learn a bit better. <laughs> Dave Love, business plans are more for your investors. Yep, to explain how their money will be used, risk, profits, expectations, web devs shouldn't need, it's just your knowledge, labor, and personal assets. Yeah, that's it. The investors are going to want want that. But at the end of the day, the investors are going to be judging you based on your character. So, for example, I have uh, some friends who have startups. And one of them, they would use me as a reference. And they would have the investors, heavy hitters too. They would have me call me up to get to get uh, as, a, as a character reference and an experience reference with the, with the founders. And I've had this a couple of times. And they're, they're much more concerned about their personality traits, their psychology, um, who they are as individuals, rather than anything else. Um, that's why I tell people, after you learn your coding skills, it's much more important to, to learn good psychology, good interpersonal skills, good uh, emotional skills, uh, than it is to learn a new framework or a new language. Because if you want to advance in your career, whether you're working somewhere, freelancing or starting a business, having good psychology skills, psychological skills for yourself and for the people around you uh, is far more important. And I can tell you that from uh, years of experience. I, amongst my friends, the people who are the smartest people I know, some of the smartest people I know uh, have had the hardest lives and, and, and they've accomplished nothing because they have psychological problems. Uh, the most stable psychologically speaking, people I know do the best because uh, they can be calm and consistent and get to their goals and not overreact to things, etc. So that's my, my advice. I've just seen it too many times. Mo from San Francisco. Just wanted to thank you. Just accepted my dream job as software engineer at Disney. Hey, congratulations, dude. Fantastic. Your videos were very helpful to me when first starting out. Fantastic. Good job, dude. Let us know how it goes. Fantastic. That's great stuff. Continued. Your advice on writing simple code is something I use a lot in my day-to-day. -day. I had dozens of interviews. Not one of them mentioned my lack of comp sci degree. Totally self-taught. There you go, man. I thank you for posting that. It's inspirational for a lot of the people watching. So I appreciate you giving back to the community that way. It's great. Congrats, man. That's cool. Love to hear back from students who do well. For most businesses, you wouldn't be able to write a good plan until you've run the business a couple of years anyway. Exactly, Dave. Dave's got some experience. Exactly. You have no baseline. You need a baseline to be able to uh, start write, planning and projecting for f subsequent years, meaning you have to have run your business uh, to a point where there's a stable pattern to its operations, if you will. And from that, you can discern what's going to go on. I found it takes about three years of stable, uh, of a stable uh, 
operational thing. And then you can start projecting forward. So yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, nice bokeh, jealous of your camera setup, not gonna lie. Well, I appreciate that hiring manager. I worked hard, was, camera stuff is as much my hobby as anything else, so it only took me about a couple thousand videos before I got it down, so I think I got it down pretty good now. Uh, you skipped my question, did I skip your question? Uh, let's see if I have, let's see if I can find it, Greg. Hold on, I'm gonna try. There it is. Hi, Steph. What do you think about Blazor, and what do I need to know before I can start learning Blazor? I don't know. I've never used Blazor. So hold on a second. Let's see if I can find Blazor. Blazor. People have mentioned it a few times, so I'll take it out. All right. All right. We'll see what this is all about. All right. Blazor. Build client web apps with C Sharp. Well, you're going to have to learn C Sharp. That's the first thing. All right, here we go. Uh, private and current account, private, uh, interactive web UI with C Sharp. So you're gonna have to learn C Sharp, start with C Sharp. Uh, run on WebAssembly or web server, built on open web standards, that's good. Share code libraries. Blazor apps can use existing .NET libraries, which is very good because .NET is very big. Thanks to .NET standard, formal specification of .NET APIs that are common across all .NET implementations. So I guess it's cross-platform. Uh, you got JavaScript interop, meaning you can easily call JavaScript libraries and APIs. Oh, there, there it is right here. <laughs> you can continue to use large, uh, the large ecosystem of JavaScript libraries that exist for client-side UI while writing your logic in C Sharp. Hmm. Uh, Blazor takes care of seamlessly executing any JavaScript code on the client. Free tools for every operating system, that's good. Mac OS, UI component. So uh, open source and free, 100,000 plus contributors. Okay, company, well, so it's, it's a pretty uh, active uh, platform. So it looks like, based on this, it looks like something interesting. So I would start learning with C Sharp first thing. So you go with C Sharp first, Get your head wrapped around that, and then you can start looking at Blazor. Uh, but also look at the job opportunities, you know? See what's out there, guys. Uh, how are we doing for time? All right, we're gonna be wrapping this up because uh, it's almost an hour. And uh, uh, kind of I, okay, I'm just, I'm just scrolling down here. One minute, one minute. Uh, uh, do you think it's a good idea to start freelancing first to get a few real world projects under my belt, then, then get a job at a company to start off a higher salary? Yeah, exactly. That's what I tell people to do, by the way. You learn your fundamentals, the basics. Then you go out there, excuse me, you do some freelancing jobs for free even. Consider it your stage work. And then uh, with the strength of having done a few real world projects for real people or real small companies, uh, you profile those on a website of your own, your own website, your resume site, if you will. And then from there, you open up many more opportunities to get jobs. Like That's the quickest way to get a job. It's the fastest way to get a job and the easiest. So yeah, that's it. Who knows? Or you may find yourself loving freelancing. So you, you know, two opportunities. What are some good resources to learn C++ do you recommend? Mm, I couldn't say, I couldn't say. Uh, Team Alara Joel. WordPress, here I come. Hey Stefan, how difficult would it be some level, excuse me, how difficult would be some mid-level WordPress development? I don't know PHP, I use Node, but I guess, but got a job today and I would be using WordPress quite a lot, yikes. See, there you go. No jobs in PHP WordPress, right? You'll be able to learn PHP very quickly. Just learn the basics of PHP. It's, it's, you'll get around that pretty quickly, so don't worry about that. Uh, you'll probably find the uh, WordPress code kind of, yeah, but it doesn't matter. WordPress is just so popular. Mm. Congratulations on the job, by the way. I'm just drinking my uh, grape juice here. 
Uh, hey, just wanted to see if I'm on the right track. I'm trying to get into backend. I'm learning SQL databases, Spring Boot, HTML CSS. I know Java, don't know how to tie everything together yet. Well, I think um, once you had your head around, excuse me, once you have your head wrapped around HTML and CSS, you understand the basics of database design and basic normalization. Uh, then I would just jump into building real projects. Uh, Spring Boot, I assume you want to go work for larger organizations. That's why you would learn that. Uh, what languages are you currently learning? Uh, none. And what languages do you see being used more and more in the future? I've talked about this many times, but in a nutshell, if you look at any of the uh, top 10 languages, there's all these different indexes. Um, it's the same cast of characters that are always in the top 10. C++, C, Java, Python, JavaScript, PHP, C Sharp. Uh, those are always in the top 10. And some for, and maybe a few others here and there once in a while. So you can't go wrong with any of those. They're not going anywhere. Remember, Python is like 25, 30 years old, and I think it's the top language in the world. JavaScript is 25 years old, so it's even number one, number two. Java is number t three, number two in the world. It's been around for 25 years, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the old game where languages were coming in quickly and replacing the old, that's that went away in the early 2000s. Everything is stabilized now vis-a-vis -vis the programming languages. So. Pick any of the top 10 and you'll be fine. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Fatih, Fatih T. He says, hey, I'm new here. Welcome to the stream, dude. Uh, be sure to thumbs up because you like my long hair. I'm 36 and I feel like it's too late to begin coding. No, it's not. Yet the idea lingers. What language do you recommend I start and where should I begin? Came in at no boot camp mark. Well, I think, um, listen, I'm biased because I'm self-taught. I'm biased because I have a code training platform that's uh, highly regarded. So I would recommend you checking that out, whether it be my mentoring program, which you see all the links below, or just go to my studio web store. There's all kinds of code courses and packages, inexpensive. You get my web stack course for $39, you know, it covers everything you're going to need. And uh, you're going to see the reviews are quite good uh, about my projects, my products here. These are all reviews on Google. So check that out. And just start there, man. This is kind of like the foundation course you should take, no matter what type of program you're going to do. It not only teaches you the web stack, but it teaches you how to think like a professional developer. And it's highly regarded, and it will not break the bank. Uh, 39 bucks. It's, uh, yeah, I think you'll get a lot of use out of it. Anyway, you get a money back guarantee. So you just read my reviews. Don't take my word for it. Just go read the reviews. These are drawn from Google. So, uh, yeah, so you know they're legit. I hope that answers that question for you. All right, Serbia. How, how hard is coding compared to Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets? I'm a master at spreadsheets and I want to do more, but it seems like a huge mountain climb. I'm in lizard brain mode, probably. Well, yeah. Mm. You just got to get past a few key concepts in coding and in programming. And once you get past those concepts, it just starts to flow. So it's just a question of effort and time. Um, so I would suggest, again, I suggest try out my courses, money back guarantee, the reviews don't lie. Go to Google, type in Studio Web, Studio Web Reviews or Studio Web Montreal Reviews, and you see all the reviews, and you see that you get a lot. Uzbek, hello from Korea. Hey, man, thanks for your advice today, hey, no problem. Yeah, good stuff. That's one country I like to visit, by the way. Uh, self. Uh, sup old timer kidding oh yeah 169 man are recruiters asking for too much for a program to know react angular Vue, and redux react angular why would they ask for all three that'd be silly but you know what it is once you're a decent developer you should be able to pivot pretty quickly that's an, again that's one of the illusions 
that the young nerdling noobs will tell you or think that you you know you're a Java coder and that's who you ever that's all you ever be, could be, or I'm a reactive hour. That's all I'm ever going to do, could be, but it's much more probable that in your development career you will be pivoting from different technologies on a regular basis. Part of the job of a developer is to be able to learn new things quickly. That's part of the job. So um, I wouldn't be worried about this, that, or the other thing. When I would, in my last few years as a freelance developer, I would go into the job with no expectation about what language or stacks I was going to use. It depended on the nature of the work at hand. Uh, so I would go in there, evaluate the project for all the different things that needed to be evaluated, the company dynamics, uh, the st stacks they may already have in place, uh, what it is they wanted to do specifically. And then I would choose a technology that was best suited for that job. And sometimes it would be a technology I've never worked with before. I would just learn it. Uh, you got to look at the programming languages and the frameworks and the libraries as tools, like on your tool belt. And which, if you're properly trained, uh, you're able to easily figure out how to use these tools and how to choose which tool to, to uh, use at the time. I hope that makes sense. Uh, that's the high level thinking uh, development. Uh, hello, high pro Galio da Massa Brazil. Uh, very good, I probably said that wrong. Hello from Antalya, Turkey. Hmm. Uh, Stefan was on lockdown here. Like you guys, I can't be nice to a waitress. Everything is shut down. Uh, give it time. It will come. Uh, maybe at the grocery store. You know, when you go to the cashier, replace waitress with cashier, you'll be good. He's talking about a lizard wizard Komodo task. What do you think of Xamarin? Haven't used it. Haven't used it. Uh, greetings from Serbia. Uh, that was professional stuff. Bara Abu Al Rub. I, I did get it right. Abu Al is a common Arabic last name. Ah, very good. Thanks for letting me know. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's I like I like trying to pronounce people's names. Cosera has a full stack course. There you go. Good evening. Yeah, but Studio Web has one too, and I hear that Studio Web's is far better. It's far better. Uh, good evening. I'm from Florida. Hey, uh, Kevin. How are I? I recognize you, man. Mm. What else? Minnesota. Uh, which framework do you recommend for PHP? Laravel. Uh, Laravel is the preeminent uh, PHP framework. Hello from North Pole. <laughs> I try code here. All right. It's over an hour. Thanks for joining the stream, guys. If you did like the stream, do please give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that. And uh, I will be setting up the Discord server. I guess I guess I'm gonna have to do it in the next couple of days. So there you go. All right, I'll leave you with my ASMR video. Uh, check out the links below. Thank you for doing your live during these hours. Greetings from the Philippines. Hey, no problem, Walter. Acacio, appreciate you coming on. Uh, ah, from love from civil engineer watching you from India. Ah, ancient Baba, take care of yourself, man. I'm here. India is having a bit of trouble like Canada, so take care of yourself. Uh, light is at the end of the tunnel. I think the U.S. is going to send a crap load of uh, AstraZeneca to you guys. So that's good. Uh, hey, Steve, it's Steph, it's me again. I end up staying at the company that I am since it was software development instead of database administration. That's cool, man. Hey, Bangkok. Peter Lowe, hey, man. Welcome to the stream. I love Bangkok, by the way. I love the, uh, the street food vendors. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there. Um, all right. We'll talk soon. Thanks for joining the stream. And uh, my email, please. Stefan at Studio Web. Dot com. All right, we'll talk soon. I'll move over to the uh, the ASMR boat if you want to relax. Ciao.